Hi guys, my name's Colm. So today we're gonna to be installing the Just To Market brand new WFO Concepts 14 bolt to Toyota driveline flange. Now, uh, I got really lucky. I was trying to find something like this a couple years ago. I know through searching the forums that there is a lot of other people that have been trying to do the same thing. Um, but it was really hard, I guess, or just required a little bit more engineering to come up with a 14 bolt flange uh, that would adapt to a stock Toyota driveline. So WFO Concepts has finally done it. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to the product on their website. And today I'm gonna give you guys a quick overview of the product and a uh, quick installation video. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy. Comes nicely packaged as you hope. So this is everything that comes in the WFO kit. Part number, oil seal, flange to the Toyota driveline, pinion nut, four mounting bolts. To install the pinion nut, it is a standard 30 millimeter 12 point socket. There's the socket. I'll put a link in the description below. To remove the stock 14 bolt pinion nut, you will need a one and a half inch socket as well. I had to go out and buy both. Tools you will need to get the job done. A torque wrench, capable of measuring in inch pounds. Any adapters you might need to go to your sockets. So I need to go from quarter inch to three eighths, from three eighths to half. Your inch and a half inch, your inch and a half socket to get your stock 14 bolt pinion nut off. A 30 millimeter 12 point socket to install the new WFO pinion nut. Molly grease to put on the oil seal, the new oil seal. An impact gun to get the pinion nut off. Uh, and then a cheetah bar of some sort, as well as possibly a crowbar to install the new pinion nut and to help achieve the desired inch pound reading. That apparently can take a lot of torque. They estimate 350 foot pounds or greater. Turns out when installing the new pinion nut, I actually really struggled even using the massive breaker bar to achieve the higher inch pound torque. I called the experts at WFO Concepts and they recommended just using the impact I did a lot of videoing while I was doing the initial install. My plan did not go to pl go to plan. Typical projects, right? Um, and so I'm going to provide my recommendations or opinion based on what I would do if I was to do it hindsight. Uh, now, basically, this procedure follows the manufacturer's uh, recommendations. Um, and my initial plan was to not have to remove the actual pinion assembly housing. What butchered that was that the yoke is extremely hard to get off if you don't have a press or something like that. Here's, here's the recommended plan of attack. I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Okay, step one, remove the pinion assembly from the axle. There's six bolts, take those out, use a rubber mallet and or a wood block and tap the back side of the uh, yoke. Working it out, it is a really snug fit. Um, try not to use or do not use a chisel uh, to hit on the mating surface um, where the uh, pinion assembly mates to the differential. If you damage that, you will probably have leaks. Also remember there is a shim. Mine had a shim. Most of them probably have a shim, uh, but yours might not. Uh, remember to make sure you hold on to that shim because you will need it when you put it back in. Step two, take your pinion assembly to your vise. Clamp it via the pinion flanges, uh, pinion assembly flange. Grab your torqueometer and measure your, uh, the current torque in inch pounds. Record that, that is very important. Key is making sure you maintain a consistent speed. And of course you don't want to read the initial speed, you want to read the constant uh, speed measurement that you're checking so yeah keep in mind you guys will be doing this torque check with the pinion assembly in the vise step three you now have to remove your pinion nut uh, you can 
A couple different ways of doing that is to uh, clamp the pinion assembly via the yoke in your vise, grab your impact, yank off the uh, nut. It is extremely tight. Uh, or you, if you have, you can make your own sort of uh, either a cheetah bar or some sort of flange bracket that you can bolt to the flange and uh, to hold it that way, but uh, the vise should work. Step four, remove that old yoke. Now you can do this in numerous different ways. Uh, if you have a press that is big enough, do it with the press, it'd be by far the easiest. Or if you have a vise you, uh, that is also big enough, you can grab the yoke with the vise and uh, simply tap the pinion out. Uh, make sure you use a ball pin hammer and then you can either use like a bigger sledgehammer or something to tap on. Just do not destroy your pinion shaft. Uh, now I had some issues, my vise the pinion assembly didn't fit between the uh, vice um, channels. I didn't want to press out the entire pinion um, from the bearings and everything. So what I did is I mocked out my own homemade vice. Step five, remove that old oil seal. Easy, I used a flathead screwdriver, tapped it from the backside all the way around, came out no problems. After you've done that, I recommend cleaning it with some good brake clean, just like you would anything else, make sure there's no dirt or any other debris that has fallen into the bearings. Step six, once your assembly is clean, you know that the bearings are good. I just did that as a good maintenance check. I also checked my pinion um, wear to make sure it was wearing smoothly and everything was as expected. Uh, you can carry on with step six. So step six is to put in your new oil seal. Uh, put that in just like you would any oil seal. Uh, try to start it by hand, make sure it's nice and flat and then work your way around with a mallet uh, hitting it evenly. If you are struggling to get it in, sort of get a lower down view to see what is the higher side and work your way, um, work that higher side in. Um, you should, shouldn't take an exceptional amount of force. One thing to note, I was not able to get my seal all the way 100% flush with the flange. Now I don't know if that's normal with these axles, uh, but I did feel it fully seat, so I left a very small gap. Um, it should be good to go. Step seven, you yoke install. So I recommend putting some grease on the splines just to help prevent any leakage when it's installed. Uh, also helps that spline go on, uh, yoke on just a little bit easier. Uh, line the yoke up by hand, verifying the splines are uh, lined up. Now it does not go on easily. It's an extremely tight fit. Uh, I actually had to pull out a rag, put that on top, and then uh, tap the yoke on with a mallet. Uh, it took a, took a little bit of work. Uh, I tapped it on enough to where I could thread the pinion nut on with three to four threads. Uh, and then I, I did mine with a uh, half inch ratchet. But for you guys, if I was gonna do it again, I would grab the impact, I would uh, torque it down until you feel like it's getting really close to bottoming out. From there, I would recommend putting a mark like I will show, like I'm showing here. Just a reminder, you guys will be doing this on the vise. Was mark your pinion, mark your nut. That way you can see how much, uh, how much you're moving it. So I marked it, hold the flange with your hand. Move it just a little bit. As you can see, it was roughly split that distance in half. Check your preload and repeat until you get your one to five inch pounds higher than your pre reading. Step eight, install that pinion assembly housing back into the differential. Remember the shim. I put some grease between the differential housing and the shim and the shim and the uh, pinion assembly housing. Install the six bolts. The factory torque spec is 65 newton meters. Uh, once you've done, and then that's that. Final step, appreciate the work you've done. Bolt up that stock Toyota drive shaft, take it for a test drive, and enjoy. Thank you, WFO. Thank you, a little bit of creativity and ingenuity. Okay, and so no interference, even with the pinion guard for you guys like me that have a pinion guard, but no clear, uh, no uh, interference at all. 
the whole way around. Even with your uh, Zerk fittings, you have plenty of space. And I say plenty, you know, you're tight fit, but you have space. Uh, sorry guys, allergies hit me like a freight train today. But I couldn't be any happier with the new flange. I only wish it was available a couple of years ago when I originally put the 14 bolts over the truck. I hope the video was helpful. If you have any advice for me or advice that could help somebody else out, comment below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. And if you want to see future videos, hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.